Once upon a time, in a terrible thunderstorm, a big tiger crept for shelter close to the wall of an old woman's hut. Now this old woman was very poor. Her hut was a tumble-down old place, and the rain leaked through the holes in her roof. Drip, 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 fell the rain, and the poor old woman tried to drag her furniture away from the holes in the roof. Oh, dear, oh, dear, she moaned. What an awful storm. I'm sure I would not be nearly as afraid of a big tiger or an elephant or a lion as I am of this perpetual dripping, dripping. And she dragged her bed across the room to get it away from the dripping water. The tiger, crouching against the house, heard every word. This perpetual dripping that frightens her more than a tiger or an elephant or a lion must be very terrible, he said. What can this perpetual dripping be? And then as he heard her dragging the things about in the house, he said, My, what a horrible noise! Surely that noise must be perpetual dripping. Now at this moment, a chatty maker, Potter, came down the road. The night was very cold. His donkey had strayed away, and the poor old man was so bewildered that he could not find the donkey. Suddenly, there was a flash of lightning, and the man saw a large beast lying by the wall of the old woman's hut. Mistaking the beast for his donkey, the chatty maker rushed at the tiger, seized it by the ear, and commenced beating and abusing it with all his might. You wretched old donkey, you, to run away and leave me to look for you in this frightful storm. Get up and carry me home, or I'll break every bone in your lazy old body. He kicked the poor beast and pounded him. The tiger did not know what to make of it. He was very much frightened. This must be perpetual dripping he said to himself. No wonder the old woman said that she was more afraid of it than of a tiger or an elephant or a lion, for it gives so many hard blows. As the poor tiger got up, the chatty maker climbed on his back and forced the tiger to carry him home. All the way he kicked and beat the tiger, thinking it was his donkey. When he got home, the chatty maker tied the tiger securely to the hitching post in front of the house and went in to bed. Next morning, when the chatty maker's wife got up and looked out of her window, she beheld a great tiger tied up in front of the house. The tiger looked as frightened and as meek as a lamb. Husband! Husband! she called loudly. Wake up! Wake up! Do you know what animal you brought home last night? Why, yes, my donkey, to be sure, he answered. The donkey ran away from me, but I caught him just the same and made him bring me home. Come see for yourself, said his wife. Here was the great tiger tied to the post. Where is my donkey then, asked the man. I rode him home last night and tied him to the post myself. Oh, no, you must have ridden down that tiger, said his wife. Soon the news spread all over the village that the chatty maker had captured a great tiger and had ridden home on his back, and that he had tied him to his hitching post and trained him to be as meek as a lamb. The report even carried to the Raja of the country, and he came with his lords and attendants to see this astonishing sight. Now the tiger was a very large one and had long been the terror of the whole country. And the Raja was so pleased to have this terrible tiger captured that he conferred all possible honor on the valiant chatty maker. You are a very brave man, my friend, said the Raja. I will give you a new house and lands. You shall be lord in my court and you shall be commander of a thousand horsemen. So the chatty maker gave up making pots and clay earthenware, 
and he and his wife lived in the beautiful house given him by the Raja, and they wore gorgeous raiment. And the chat tea maker did, indeed, look like a lord of the court. Wherever he went, people pointed him out and said, How there is the brave man who captured a hungry tiger and rode on his back. Now, not long after this, a Raja from a neighboring country sent word that he was bringing a mighty army to wage war. When the people heard this, they were terrified. All the generals came to the Raja and said, We are not prepared for war. Who will be the chief commander? Then some people said, You have just given the Chatee maker command over a thousand horsemen. He is a brave and fearless man. Why do you not put him in command of your army? That is a very good idea, answered the Raja. I will make him commander-in-chief. So he sent for the valiant Chatee maker. Said he, My generals are afraid to take command, for they say we are not prepared for war. But I know that you are brave and fearless, and into your hands I will place all the power of my kingdom. You must put our enemies to flight. It shall be as you command, said the Chatee maker. But before I lead the whole army, let me go out alone and find out something about the strength of the enemy and examine their position. The Raja consented to this, and the Chatti Maker went home to his wife. Oh, wife, wife, what shall I do? he asked in fright. They have made me their commander-in-chief. It is a very hard place for me to fill. I shall have to ride at the head of my troops, and you know that I was never on a horse in my life. And so I have asked the Raja to let me go out alone first. We shall get a very quiet pony, and I shall ride out before anyone sees me. But early the next day, before the Chatee maker had time to start, the Raja sent to him a very spirited horse, all saddled and bridled, and requested that the Chatee maker ride that horse out to meet the enemy. The poor Chatee maker was terrified, for the horse was a powerful animal that pranced about, champing his bit and rolling his eyes, and the Chatee maker was sure that if he ever mounted upon that horse, he would soon fall off. But he did not dare to refuse the horse sent by the Raja. So he bowed politely to the messengers and said, Tell the Raja I am deeply grateful for his gift. But when the messengers were gone, he said to his wife, Oh, oh, what am I to do? How can I ever ride this terrible horse? Now do not be so frightened, said his wife. I will tie you on the back of the big horse, and if you start at night, no one will see that you are tied on. That night his wife held the horse while her husband jumped and jumped, trying to get up into the saddle. At last, after many trials, he succeeded in getting on. He was so frightened that he called loudly to his wife, Oh, wife, wife, hurry, hurry! So she wound him all about with strong ropes and tied his feet firmly in the stirrups. And she put one rope around his neck and shoulders and around his waist and fastened them to the saddle. Wife, wife, he screamed, you forgot to tie my hands. Oh, no, she said. It is better for you to have your hands free. Hold on by the mane. So he caught the horse's mane as firmly as he could, and away and away went the horse, carrying the poor frightened Chatee maker. Faster and faster over hedges and rivers and ditches and plains he galloped and galloped until they came in sight of the enemy's camp. When the poor old Chatee maker saw the horse carrying him towards the enemy, he was more frightened than ever. He made one last effort to save himself, and as the horse darted under a young banyan tree, he stretched out his hand and seized the tree with all his might, hoping that his ropes would break and the tree would pull him down from the horse. But the banyan tree was in very loose soil, and the horse was plunging at such terrific speed, when the Chatee maker caught hold, up came the tree by its roots, and the Chatee maker rode on, waving the banyan tree over his head and shrieking and screaming in his fright. 
Now the soldiers of the enemy had heard that an army was coming out against them, and when they saw the Chatee maker, they were sure he was the leader of a vanguard. Look, look, they cried in terror. Here comes a man of gigantic stature, riding on a mighty horse. He rides at full speed over rocks and ditches and tears up trees in his rage. And running to the Raja, they cried out in fright. Here comes the whole force of the enemy. Men of gigantic stature mounted on mighty horses. As they gallop along, they tear up trees in their rage and brandish them about as war clubs. We can fight men, but we cannot fight monsters. Now the chat team maker was coming nearer and nearer and shrieking louder and louder in his terror as he waved the tree wildly about his head and the horse plunged on. So others rushed to the Raja and said, It is true, it is true. See, they are coming. Look, look, let us fly for our lives. Then the whole panic-stricken crowd fled from their camp, for no one wanted to meet such an enemy. But first they made the Raja write a note begging for peace. Soon after the enemy had fled from the camp, the horse carrying the chatee maker came galloping into it. As he reached the camp, the ropes broke and the chatee maker tumbled to the ground and the horse, worn out from his long run, stood still. The chatee maker looked all around and was greatly surprised to find the whole camp deserted. In the tent of the Raja he found the letter and took it back home with him. He was afraid to mount the horse again, so he walked all the long journey back, leading his tired horse. He did not get home until late that night, but his wife saw him coming and ran out to meet him. Why, uh, what is the matter, my good man? she asked. Oh, wife, wife, he crowed. I am so weary. Every bone in my body aches. I have ridden all over the world since last night, and I have had to walk all the way back today. And I am so tired and hungry. When I came to the camp of the enemy, no one was there, but I found this letter. Then he told his wife the whole story of his wild ride. Oh, we must send a messenger to the Raja with this letter and tell him that you will come in the morning and report for yourself, she said. We must send the horse also, for I know that you never want to ride him again. So his good wife sent the horse and the letter to the Raja, with the message that her husband would surely come in the morning. And the next day, when the people saw the chat tea maker walking to the royal palace, they said, Why, this man is as modest as he is brave. He went out all alone and put our enemy to flight, and now he walked simply to the door of the Raja, as though he had no pride. The Raja came to the palace door to greet the Chatee Maker, and when the Chatee Maker bowed down before the Raja, the Raja lifted him to his feet and gave him every honor. You have saved our lives and shall be set over all the kingdom, said the Raja. You shall be next to me in authority, for you are as modest and as humble as you are brave. So the Chatee Maker was rewarded for all that he had done by having twice as much rank and wealth given him. But the Chatee Maker never would ride a horse. He had his own beautiful coach in which to ride, and he was often carried about on a litter so that no one ever knew that he was not a bold and brave rider. Had he not ridden on a tiger? And had he not routed an army by rushing at them? and pulling up trees to frighten them away? Yes, indeed, the people were all very proud of the valiant Chatee Maker, and he lived very happily all the rest of his life. <laughs>